Okay, so I want to um, clean the bearing, the motor bearing, uh, on this motor. And this is the bottom bearing. Motor's upside down. This is the bottom bearing. Um, what I want to do is take this whole bearing assembly off, this bracket with the bearing. It's really more of a bushing with the contained inside. Pluck it out because sure enough there will be some grease in there and it will be hardened. And it will need to be cleaned out. And then I'll put some new fresh sewing machine grease in there. And uh, that'll help it uh, spin more freely. It's not bad now, but believe me, when you put new grease in there and you don't put too much, you put the right amount in, that thing will spin as smooth and free as you can be. Um, I will try to get to that top bearing, but I don't really want to take it apart too far to get to that point. So I'll do the best I can. Usually um, it's the bottom bearing that has seen more wear and, and actually is plugged up with grease from the last servicing and that sort of thing. So I'll take a look. If I can get it apart, great. If I can't, at least the bottom bearing will be done. And I'll do my best to clean the top bearing without taking it apart and I'll put some more grease in there as well. Okay, here we go. We're removing the screws that hold the bearing housing on. And, and pretty much all motors are the same. Sometimes the housing um, will have plastic on it or it'll have the whole housing, a big housing over the motor and you lift that out. Like Calaro's Micromatics are like that. And you take the whole housing off and the bearing is integral to that housing. But it's all pretty much the same. There would be a bottom bushing. You loosen it and you lift this off of there like so. And you see what's inside there. Basically it's a ball and socket arrangement with and the the ball part so to speak is the bushing it's it's a basically a a ball that's been hollowed out in a cylindrical shape that the motor rides in and then that ball is able to float somewhat in that socket that way it can account for any minor um you know um so any minor pro you know non-square where the where the motor shaft's not exactly square with the bearing housing so if the motor shaft is at a slight angle half a degree or something like that this ball arrangement will make up for that and uh that way you don't get excessive wear on the bearing i'll clean up that shaft i'll clean out the bearing i'll put a q-tip down there with some lacquer thinner too i'll get it all clean then i'll put some new grease in there and reassemble it now you see that the screws fit are pretty good tight fit inside those screw holes there's very little room for and there's no room for adjustment but little room for error as well so when you put this back together it's usually no sweat it'll go right back you don't have to worry about alignment or anything like that that ball and socket takes care of that and you'll see that now the motor is able to lift up and down just a little bit and sometimes that can help me to get to that bearing on the bottom on the uh, top side of it okay I'll go ahead and clean her up put it back together I mentioned earlier that I like to use sewing machine um, lubricants on record players think about the machines and the kind of machines they are they're both small light machines that turn not too fast but you know not not slow either so they see the same sorts of wear and stresses so here's the sewing machine grease that I use. comes in a little tube. One tube will last me a long time. As you can see, I put a tiny bit on that screwdriver, on the end of a very small screwdriver. And then this is the liquid oil that I use, the machine oil. It's good stuff. It, uh, it uh, is inexpensive. I can get it at a local sewing store without going to a lot of trouble. And I use it on, on record players. I use it on on tape decks. I've been using this stuff for years. No need to buy all that expensive fancy lubrication materials when you can just buy this stuff. It works out great. So on this bearing what I'm going to do is you take a tiny bit of, of grease and you just poke it down in the hole. It doesn't need much. I may get just a little bit more. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. This is not so critical in this spot uh, where you can't have oozing. It's okay to lubricate it. Get a little bit in there. And then 
there is it's, it might not be able to see it in this in the camera but there is a felt disc in, that surrounds that that ball in the socket it's held in you know you see the ball is kind of held in by those fingers so up under those fingers is a felt disc it's a lubrication disc so basically I take a couple drops of sewing machine oil and I put it on that felt you know one I put about three drops in there one is right here there's a drop there's a drop and there's a drop there I put my uh, sewing machine oil in a small s syringe that way I don't waste much I'm not likely to spill it and I can get it where I need it to be works out pretty well and so now this thing is ready to put back on the motor and so I'll go ahead and uh, give that a shot right now boy it's hard to do this with a camera I gotta tell you okay so it fits right on there piece of cake and uh, I guess I went off camera sorry about that guys so this this fits right on here just like so that's all there is to it put the screws in and tighten them down